one would think that at first listening to this gospel passage, one's conclusion might be, so what is so wrong about washing one's hands before one eats? And why is Jesus, and oh, he is very much angry here, using such words as, you are hypocrites, you defile, not the kind of words you normally associate with Jesus. So what's wrong with washing one's hands that makes him so upset? We need, therefore, to look at what this really means to understand what Jesus is really angry about. And he is angry here. Washing of hands for cleansing, if you will. Nothing wrong. But what was it used for? It wasn't just used for that. It was a ritual. What do I mean by that? It was a ritual in which a prescribed amount of water could only be used to wash your hands. While you were doing it, you needed to say a very special prayer to God. And this action of washing one's hands, saying this prayer, uh, the tradition was that you would be purified, you would be righteous, you would be holy. In this one little act. This was a tradition had endowed by the elders. Who are the elders? The elders are the ruling class of their society. They told the people what is right and what is wrong. They were the judge, the jury, and the interpreter of the law, and they even made laws on their own. This was a human tradition. This was not at all anything to do with God. That's all it took. They believed. If I did this prescribed ritual, doing exactly what I'm supposed to do with the prayer, with the water, with the fingers, etc., et I would be holy and not have to do anything else. What about the Ten Commandments? What about following God's law? What about what does it really mean to be righteous? What does it really mean to be holy? Is it some sort of human tradition? Or is it something that you must turn to God for help to attain? That's why Jesus says, these externals don't say anything to my apostles about why they're not washing their fingers before meals. Because what you do is hypocritical. It says so right here. You're hypocrites. Because you live the law or your law, but you don't follow God's law. You think holiness, righteousness comes from a simple little act of washing one's fingers, when indeed that is so contrary and so false. Holiness comes when you observe what we heard in our first reading. The law. The Ten Commandments, God's way of attaining holiness, further exemplified and simplified by his son, Jesus. The Ten Commandments will lead you to righteousness, not some ritual act that humans devised. A shortcut to holiness, if you will. Well, there's no such way. Jesus is saying, well, there is no such way. You talk about defilement because we wouldn't wash our fingers. What is defilement? Defile, defilement is what, what comes from within out. It is called sin. That's defilement. Not forgetting to wash one's hands or not washing one's hands. That's got nothing to do with holiness. But you see. So why are you hypocrites? You profess one thing from the outside, but the inside you are so totally contrary. Do this and you will be holy while your life is filled with sin. Who's holier? Well, Jesus is saying, no. Until your outside matches your inside, you will never achieve the holiness you think you've got just by washing your fingers. That's what's going on here. That's what's the dynamic, if you will, this dialogue. Again, go, who is he after? Jesus always goes after the Pharisees because they are the leaders of his time in terms of the church or the Judaism. 
And they are indeed very hypocritical for what they say from one thing, they do just the opposite. What Jesus is saying, when are you going to become authentic? Well, what do I mean by that? When is it what you proclaim on the outside matches what you live and show inside? When are you going to have those two come together? That proclaims, that will dictate if you're holy or not. Profess the love of God with your lips and then live it with your heart. That's what he's saying here. Do away with these human traditions such as washing of hands. And they, uh, my brothers and sisters, they had a lot of traditions. They were never brought down by God. They were simply instilled by uh, the humans, the people. Shortcuts to achieving oneness with God. Well, there are no shortcuts. There is no shortcuts. There's only living the word, living God's commandment, simplified and purified by his son, Jesus Christ, who simply stated, if you love God, you love self, you, you love others, and you profess it, not only profess it, but you live it, you will attain holiness. Authenticity. Maybe that's ooh, the word I want to use here. Authenticity. I'm wondering. Where comes the challenge? Well, we know how he challenged them. Is he challenging us also 2,000 years later here? Can we say with our hearts what we say with our lips? Maybe I'm trying to get... Okay, wait a minute. Here, here we go. Are we authentic? We profess we are Christians. Do we live it? We profess we love our almighty God with all our being, all our strength, but well, do we live it? If we don't, then we are like, how, what's, you know, we're not authentic. Wow, that's a horrible thought. I'm not authentic. See, I gotta include myself in this mix too, brothers and sisters. And I'm not just talking to you, I'm talking to me too. Do I do it? Do I live what I profess? Do you live what you profess? And if you can say to God Almighty, I do, then you are holy in his eyes and his sight. But if you can say, no, I don't, then we need to work on it. That's what he's saying here to them. Now, away with these things that you profess with your words. Where's your heart? That's the key, and I think that's the major challenge he not only gave to them during his time, which is being bounced right back to us 2,000 years later. And I'm going to conclude with this one statement. Do we profess with our lips and our hearts, or don't we?